Are you a runner? Or more importantly, do you want to become one? Do you want to know where to begin or how to get better? You've come to the right place. Welcome to Run Amazing Utah, where runners of Utah share their inspirational stories of how they conquered their battles, reached their goals, and overcame the seemingly impossible. If they can do it, so can you. What if you could? I mean, reach that big dream that you've always dreamt about. Maybe you think it's impossible. Maybe others have told you it's impossible. Maybe it's your body that's holding you back. Maybe you feel like you've aged or it will never be well enough to do what you want it to do. Well, guess what? That's not true. At Body Smart, we empower you and teach you how to make changes toward the kind of life you want to live and give you the tools you need to reach that goal you've always wanted to reach. From running your first mile to qualifying for Boston, we have everything you need to reach that dream. Call us at 801-479-4471 or contact us through our website, bodysmartutah.com. We can help you maximize your performance and stay on the road. Let us help you reach that dream. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Run Amazing Utah. We are so excited to have you on um, with us today as we interview Josh Bryant. He is a local runner um, and a longtime friend of Body Smart, and so we're excited to have him in today. Um, he has a bunch of different running accomplishments, such as a self-supported 100 this last year. During the crazy 2020, all the races got canceled. He has a sub three marathon a um, couple years ago now. That's crazy. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, that's pretty wild that it's that long ago. Um, and uh, yeah, just an all around good runner. Loves to be up in the mountains and, and run. And uh, always love to hear different uh, runner stories. And so um, we thought we'd invite him on. So welcome, Josh. Thanks for having me. Yeah, he just did another metabolic test. So he's done several at this point, I think. Yeah. But uh, just did another one this morning. And did an amazing job. He's burning fat like a champ now. So he is. He's still above fifty fifty. So at one hundred and fifty eight beats per minute, he's still burning more than fifty percent fat, which is pretty awesome. So um, that allowed us to set his zones and dial things in, so that we could really make sure that when he runs, he's getting the most bang for his buck out of every run, so that he knows where he's building endurance and where he's working on maximizing speed training and things like that. So pretty awesome. For him to be able to dial all of that in in that way so thanks again for joining us yeah thank you guys yeah so you've been running for how many years now basically forever just basically forever yeah nice just right out of the womb just, <laughs> just <laughs> maybe not that forever <laughs> yeah, about eight months he just decided this crawling stuff yeah. Yeah. we're running no yeah. just yeah growing up just you know i uh, grew up in cedar city so okay it was a lot smaller than it is now, like everywhere else. But yeah. um, you know, I had friends live a mile or two miles away, and if you're gonna go, you gotta go. So yeah. <laughs> you just run to their house, huh? Yeah, you just head down. So do you run then in high school and stuff like that, like track, yeah. cross country? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What were your distances? Did you uh, run track then? Yeah, I ran distance and mm -hmm. um, cross country. My my older brothers were all sprinters. Okay. They all did the 400, and they were fast. My my brother was really fast in the 800. Mm -hmm. um, but it took me a long time to build up speed. <laughs> okay. And I guess I could maintain it better, and so hmm. I went the longer distances. Yeah, you went the, the distance route. Sweet. Any accomplishments there uh, other than just enjoying it? And... Uh, no, we did we did pretty good a couple of years. Um, awesome. Uh, I guess... My best time cross cross country was a uh, fifteen thirty two. Awesome, but nice. But then my senior year slacked off. So uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. that's what you're supposed to do, senior. Year. You know, though, <laughs> in some ways, though, I I think that's okay because you created like a lifelong habit and lifelong love for running, and you're still doing it. Whereas, yeah. I, I, my guess would be that if we went back to all your track teammates and cross country teammates. Probably the overwhelming majority of them are not quite running at the level that you're still running at. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. We, I yeah. still got some friends I run with. Uh, Do you? Yeah. Cool. And then, so that's great, so. too. That's a great part of any high school team, any 
right. any team, any involvement, right? Like, yeah. You get those lifelong friends. Yeah, so. that's cool. That's awesome. That's awesome, yeah, to be able to meet up with them every so often and run again. Yep. Done races with them and stuff then? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I actually uh, went down two weekends ago to St. George and stayed at a friend's house. I ran with him. I went and saw another friend. that He ran from another school, but we were always right next to each other, right so together. we're still good yeah. pals. So. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. That's awesome. Um, so uh, as far as the ultra distances, um, you've run a few of those. What? Tell us more about your ultra distance racing and, and what you've done there. Um, uh, really start with a marathon before the ultra, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I just kind of nosedived into that. And mm-hmm. after did you I did do that, a half or anything like that before the marathon? No. Or was that like your first race was a marathon? No, like I'd done five K's, 10 K's a bunch. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and then I just signed up for a marathon. Oh, okay. So how, how long ago was it? Uh, I don't know, 2007 ish. Okay. It's a little bit. So, so yeah, good to go. Yeah. Um, and how did that go? It survived, right? It survived, like, yeah. I love the first the, like the first story. Man, I know. <laughs> yeah, the, the idea was signed up in early spring, and it was top of Utah, so mm-hmm. September. And mm-hmm. cool. I was like, yeah, great. I signed up, now I got a train. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. September shows up, and you're like... Oh, I still got a train. Oh, I still got to do it. <laughs> I signed up. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. It, you I made it survived, through. yeah. yeah. That's good. And then, uh, same basic concept for the 100. I skipped everything else and just went straight for that. So you didn't do a 50 in between. No. So you did a marathon and you were like, I just barely survived that. Let's try to do a 100 now. (laughs) Yeah, the the year span was quite a... Yeah. It was was five years afterwards about. Okay. Okay. And so... Gotcha. But... So did you do any marathons in between? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I've, I've okay. done a bunch of marathons between. And um, I actually, I ran a double. It was Mesquite and Valley of Fire, I think it was called. Okay. They were a Saturday, Sunday. So that's kind of my, okay. my my toe dipped in the water, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ultras, yeah. 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 And I met a guy running running down there. And I told him I was planning to sign up for the 100. Mm-hmm. Um, his name's Steve Kissel. Okay. Like Kessel, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking the same thing. Yeah, and uh, anyway, I talked to him mm-hmm. quite a bit down there at the marathon and stayed in contact a little bit and he helped me get going. So That's great. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's fascinating. So, two marathons back-to-back days. How did the second of those go? Um, it went pretty good. Good. Um, I, knew okay. it was, I knew it was going to be tough or whatever, but... Mm-hmm. Um, it was slow, but it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Slow by design. Yeah, you know, you're not trying to PR. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think anyone who runs a handful of marathon, they kind of learn how their body reacts and how mm-hmm. they know what to expect. And once you get moving, like you're generally pretty good. Yep. Right, you kind of learn how to pace yourself. Yeah. So yeah, and your body reacts. Right. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um. So, your first hundred was which one? The the buffalo. The buffalo. Yeah, okay. okay. Antelope Island. Antelope Island. Yeah. Okay. That's and an interesting one. That? Yeah. It was. I like it. I love that place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I like. So, uh, you guys know me, and I like space. Like, <laughs> and I like JFK speech, and he he talks about going to the moon and not going because it's easy because it's hard, and he also says in there something about failure, like having. Uh, letting the world see our failures, right? Mm-hmm. So we learn and grow. That's what Buffalo was. Mm-hmm. Went out there, wasn't really prepared. <laughs> I didn't listen to the advice that was given. Yeah. Um, so I actually dropped out about 72-ish okay. with oh, blisters, okay. just really bad blisters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think I think uh, if I would have listened to advice, if I would have you know, took my shoes off, taken care of them instead of just saying, I don't want to see them, yeah. mm-hmm. like, it would have helped a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. But the the failure aspect, like I'm okay with failure. Yeah, Everyone yeah. should be okay with failure. Totally. You learn. Right. Yeah. So that's one of the things I love the most about sport, actually. Yeah. Is you learn how to fail. Like the best mm-hmm. baseball players in the world only get a hit like one out of every three at bats or whatever, right? Yeah. Like if you if you can hit one out of three three at bats, you'll be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Right. The best NBA shooters in the world, like forty percent. They're hitting it forty yeah. percent. Like so most of the time they shoot 
it's not going in the hoop. You know, so, you know, with running, most of the time we go out, we're not winning some event. We're just running to run. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, and we have times where we, it doesn't go the way we plan. No. And no. so you have to learn how to process failure. And I think that's such a huge skill for life because a lot of time in life, we just fall short of what we were hoping for, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But you learn so. from those. And also statistically, most people actually DNF on their first 100. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. not. <laughs> you're not you're part of a good crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's so long. I mean, a marathon, you get to that like 18 to 20 mile point in a marathon and you're like, why do people do this? You know, yeah. Like, this is so long. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, when the goal is 100, like that mentality, I'm sure you probably hit that point several times yeah, throughout that day absolutely. right and so yeah that's <laughs> learning to process that is a big deal yeah that's cool yeah so and with that like so I, I dropped a 72 about and you know you go home you do the same thing after your first marathon you're like well that was that was fun whatever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then and then an hour later you're like oh look it there's another one mm-hmm. and it's so like a drug. yeah and that's <laughs> and that's what crazy. i did i signed up and I ran another one about a month later and finished that one. Wow. A month, a month later. later. That's crazy. That's impressive. Yeah. How, how did you recover from the other? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I don't know. Maybe you did. <laughs> you just pushed just, through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember we got a couple pictures that first, uh, you know, the night I, I dropped out and I'm in the chair with the ice bucket and towel. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shiver, I can still like remember shivering. Like, yeah. No, that's Your body cool. just shuts down. It's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. I feel like because you DNF'd, you accomplished something bigger than just running 100 miles. So instead of just running 100 miles, you ran 72 miles, and then you ran 100 miles. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's really cool. That is so. pretty, that was pretty wild. To do that a month later. Yeah. Wow. Which one was that then? Uh, the Salt Flats. Salt Flats. So both oh, pretty okay. local. and. Yeah. I've always wanted to do a race on the Salt Flats. It's so crazy it running out there. Yeah. I did a, a cool. commercial with ASICS where we ran out there. I probably showed you. Yeah. But uh, running out there was crazy. <laughs> so, like, after it was over, when I went out to my car, I was like, I want to try that. I want to, like, that looks yeah, so cool. Looks so, cool. I, like, I, I put all my stuff in the car and shut the door, and I just went running for a few miles <laughs> out, out through the soft plats. I was like, this is crazy. Because yeah. like, you get not very far out, and you can't see anything anymore. Like, it's all just... I feel like you get like disoriented, especially in a hundred mile race where you're already sure. tired and kind of weird in the head. I feel like <laughs> just I'm veering off. Like, yeah. yeah. You could totally could. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild. It's fine. Yeah, you gotta find something out in the distance and be like, just keep going that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. That's really cool. So since those first two hundreds, um, kinda how how frequently do you try to do one a year, two a year? How how are you doing that? Um, yeah, I've, I think pretty consistently I've done about one a year. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, there's been a couple times where I've tried to do a couple and, yeah. you know, varying success. Yeah. But uh, up till last year, I was trying to do one on my birthday oh. or for my birthday yeah. every year. And uh, I had pretty good success with those usually. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Some people do, you know, I've heard of people like. I'm going to run 37 miles because I'm turning 37 or what, you know, 42 miles because I'm turning 42. Um, yeah. If you keep that up till you're a hundred then, you know, yeah. you'll get that there. That would be pretty impressive. That would be, <laughs> that would be very impressive. Um, but no, that's, that's crazy. You you go for, you know, I'm going to triple my birthday on my birthday. Yeah. Um, well, did, so I don't even know if you guys knew this, but so when I turned 30, I actually ran uh, from Arizona to Idaho. So. What? How many I wouldn't say running. I call it an that? adventure. How it many was, miles is that? It was like 400. Oh. So wow. it was like 11 days. And 11 days and just running every day, huh? Yeah. Life so, is so much simpler when you, you just, just get and go. Yeah. That's you just awesome. forest gumped it from yeah. Arizona to Idaho. Yeah. Wow. So did you... That That's wild. So yeah. did you just pretty much run from like sun up to sun down and then camp? Yeah, pretty kind much. I had... It was in January, and so you know <laughs> that's a it, good call too. Out, <laughs> the weather cooperated really nicely, but uh, um, I actually set up housing along the way. I I knew most of the people. Some of the people I put out feelers and found 
like uh, in Delta, I just contacted Jim Olner, who hooked me up with a lady that provided me a state place to stay and some meals. And wow, cool. so how that's, fun! That's quite the goal. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. How was that journey? I've never. Yeah, I had never <laughs> yeah, heard that before. That. That's pretty wild. <laughs> Um, yeah, how was that journey? What yeah. what did you learn, I guess, along the way? Um, same things you always learn, like listen to your body, like listen to people's advice. <laughs> um, not to make not to make set plans and then try to follow them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have to learn to adjust. Yeah. Sure, sure. So. Yeah, because that's, I mean, four hundred miles. That's like forty miles a day. Yeah, I can't right. remember. What it, I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, it was like eleven days, and yeah. So I was trying to finish on my birthday. I finished the day after, so. Wow! Wow, wow. that's the best birthday ever. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty. <laughs> and then did you celebrate with like the biggest birthday cake you've ever had? Nah, that's I remember <laughs> talking to my brother on the phone when I was driving when my wife was driving me home, <laughs> and uh, no, a bunch of my it was awesome. A bunch of my family and friends they actually were up at the top. That's so cool. it was pretty great. So cool. how how did you you had to run mostly on back roads then and stuff like you you weren't running on five fifteen. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, partially. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> so I, I tried staying off the highway, obviously. But yeah. So there were some stretches. Now. Yeah, just down by St. George, going up the Black Ridge. Yeah. So I have a little jogging stroller, uh-huh. pushing it up the freeway. With all your gear and supplies yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Red <and> blues. <laughs> what you doing? Yeah. Uh, I got to call you. I might have a baby on the side of the road. So I don't think so, but can I check? <laughs> you know? So. <laughs> That's, That's, so cool, That's so awesome. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good. Yeah. yeah. No, it's that's, like that's that. fascinating. Um, well, yeah, that's such a cool story. I love that. Yeah. Um, that's that's a little much. I'm just trying to go through the numbers. Like, how much food and nutrition and stuff did you go through every day? Like, was it because because you're not just eating for today. Like, you're eating so you don't get in too much of a hole because you got to get up and do it yeah, again tomorrow, yeah. right? So yeah. it's a lot. You probably had to eat a lot every yeah, hour. I, and I had the baby stroller with food and water, and I was I was eating. I don't even know how much, but just a bunch. Yeah, and whatever I mean, your stomach could stomach yeah, kind of a thing. I mean, it was mostly sandwiches. I didn't, I didn't really go with peanut butter. I like peanut okay. butter and it feeds me mm-hmm. well. But, uh, yeah. but uh, a few of the houses, like particularly one Delta, uh, Sue, she made some big old delicious burritos. She sent me out with two or three of those, and they were marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. So... That's so fascinating. I just the logistics of that are, are fascinating to me. Um, what a cool, cool adventure. How did you train for that then? Or was that kind of like your your hundred and your marathon? Yeah, it's, like, it's this is a goal, I'm just gonna go do it. Yeah, it's kinda of one of those things I definitely could have done it better. And I, <laughs> the idea is out there like, well maybe I should, but I'm like, oh, maybe not. No. <laughs> That, that, <laughs> that sounds like so you just do you try to just like maintain like a certain amount of time every week certain and the last time we talked you said you're maintaining what did you say like between 30 40 miles a week is that just yeah kind of what you maintain all yeah. the time yeah that's kind okay. of what i'm doing right now and just and with the upcoming goals and such i'm going to try to build that up obviously but, oh, okay but that's yeah. like your base is like 30 40 yeah I'd probably okay say, i'd say probably like 20 to 40 i mean just Maybe. Yeah, and then you build so, off of that when you're training. That makes yeah. sense. So okay. that's kind of just your lifestyle, even. Yeah. Like, cool. not even training, per se. It's just what you get in as part of your lifestyle. Yeah. And then training, you, you bump up from there. Yeah. So how, how have you built that consistency in your life over time? What what allows you to be that consistent to where you can do these big things? I don't know. I think <laughs> I think a lot of it is still a team aspect. Like, I play soccer a lot. Oh, cool. I didn't have it this last year because of COVID, whatever, but mm-hmm. um, that's really, a, for me, a good solid base to where I can get out, Yeah, you know, once a week usually at least, and yeah. go have a good time with some friends and yeah. have a lot. So. That's, that's your yeah. high-intensity interval yeah. training, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it, and it really is good for that. Totally. Cool. Okay. That's awesome. Um, how does your wife, that's, this is in my head, I've been like, how does she support all this? Because that's, 
a big yeah, commitment on her yeah, part as well because you got kids and yeah, the whole shebang. Yeah, you're yeah. also in school. <laughs> yeah. You have a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, school and work and all those things. I would get right? up and run 50 miles every day instead of school. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's simpler. <laughs> so no, but um, Rachel's really like the the thing that keeps me going. Like, yeah. like awesome. my kids and Rachel, but Rachel supports me like. No question. Like, she's amazing. That's awesome. So when <laughs> awesome. you come up with your next crazy idea, she's not like, eh, I don't know. Or is she, she's just like, sounds awesome. Good. I would say 90% of the time. She's like, <laughs> All right. Like, how are we, how we going to figure it out? Like, yeah. But uh, she she is very supportive. And that's... That's awesome. I got two pictures of my favorite pictures ever. And they're... Both from 100, different 100s, but mm -hmm. it's just literally me, like, hanging on or, like, just Aww. trying to get a half moment of relaxation. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> and she's got a smile. Just, just they're up. supporting you. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's super cool. That is way cool. So. That's awesome. The One of my favorite pictures of you, we actually used it in an ad uh, for Body Smart for a, a little while was you with your sub three marathon, yeah. right? So it's a picture of, of Josh with his cool shoes and socks that were <laughs> America themed, like American flag themed, and his watch that had his time. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, oh, sure. people thought that was my race. <laughs> a lot of people were like, congrats, <laughs> nice job, man, congrats. I was like, no, 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 whoa. That was, that was not me. That was not me. Can't take credit. We had to take the credit. Um, but, but it, you know, I used it as an ad because I was like, hey, we can help you hit your goal. Because we, you know, Josh had run all these distances, but speed kind of wasn't in the equation for a while. Yeah. And he got this goal of, I want to run a sub three marathon. Haven't done that yet. You hadn't no, done one no. up to that point, right? Um, making sure I'm telling the facts right. <laughs> but he's like, I want to run a sub three marathon. How do we get there? And so we did some metabolic tests and stuff like that and kind of helped inform his training a little bit with that. I mean, he definitely put in all the work. So I, <laughs> I felt so bad when people were giving me credit. I'm like, I didn't do anything. But I just wanted to show, like, we, we can help you hit your goals. And so, but that picture was awesome. And it, it actually worked really well as an ad too. Good. So Great. Um, but that, that was just fun to be a part of that, to be able to see you hit that goal track you on race day on my phone well, occasionally there will be you know certain athletes that we've worked with that it's really fun to to follow them on race day and my wife's like oh my gosh you're crazy because i'm like on my phone the whole day on certain races. I know. well i can't remember what which race it was was it saint george or ogden maybe well ogden for sure every year i've always got a bunch of athletes but i think it was saint george obviously not last year but the year before that I was just on my phone the whole day. And usually we're down there, either she or I are running it, right? So it was like one of the first times we weren't running it in, in a long time. And and so I was just on my phone that whole day, like <laughs> watching. I think I had like nine or ten different people that I was tracking. And, and so it's fun. But yeah. and that was fun to be a small part of, of your uh, meeting that goal that day. Yeah. So it's fun. No, it helped a lot. Do yeah. The, the test and... And you helped with the training also. Yeah, so. some of the training, and we did a lot of treatments to yeah, keep yeah. in your, your feet. Because, you know, speed definitely has a, a different effect on your body when you're trying to run fast to beat yeah. you up a little bit more. Absolutely. And, and stuff, so did a whole lot of scraping. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, horribly good. Yeah, it's <laughs> horribly good. That's, <laughs> That's a great a way, good to, way to put it. Yeah. I That's like that. Very accurate. <laughs> so this last year, so you always have some kind of big kind of harebrained goal, right, yeah. Um, yeah. on the horizon. This last year, you did a self-supported 100-mile race, right? Yeah, yeah. So Melody also did a self-supported 100-mile race this year. Yeah, we we kind of became like Facebook buds. I don't know, me and Jacob, uh, my husband ran it w with me, right? Yeah. Um, but we like followed your journey. We're like, yeah. that's what we're going to do. So we followed you pretty closely as you trained and, and did that. And when you finished, we were like... It gave us hope. We're like, if you can finish, we can do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. so how is that, you know, preparing and, and doing a self-supported 100-mile race? Because normally you've got aid stations every so often and whatever. Yeah. How, did, how did you set all that up? Um, it's Melody and them, they also did it the same way. Like, yeah. kind of build a loop and get a hold of family and friends and be <laughs> like, so can you be here in like these six hours? Because I might be by sometime. <laughs> like everyone's like, when do you want us to be 
there. And we were like, just be there all day. Bring a book. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. So I was saying... <laughs> I'm, I'm shooting for this likelihood it's not going to be <laughs> anywhere near that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's it's hard it's fun but it, it is the support like Rachel like I said she's 100% there for me it's great <laughs> so she, I can't think of her now. she was your event coordinator on that day yeah, huh? yeah. That's she awesome. always that's is and, um, Alex you, know, you guys mm-hmm. met him no? yeah. he, uh, he helped out Mm-hmm. Awesome. He was just around the corner from me, so he oh, was there for me. Oh, cool. And it was kind of the same thing. He's all like, hey, uh, where are you at? And I'm all, I'm trying. <laughs> You're like, just hang on. <laughs> a little delirious, but I'll make it. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I got about halfway through it, probably less than halfway through it, and I was already like, yeah, we're going to have to alter this, because initially I, I wanted to try to get the vert that I would have been lost at, because that got canceled, so that's what I was kind of making yeah. up for. Um, so I wanted to go up Ben Lomond three times. Mm-hmm. That's kind of that yeah, yeah. familiar, right? Yeah, the same story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, going up, I went one and a half, and I was like... That's a lot of climbing. I've got to stay low. I, I don't remember. I think it was in July. It was mm-hmm. hot. It was, it was a hot. hot summer. Um, mm-hmm. One big yeah. thing that kind of saved me is the stump in North Ogden has mm-hmm. a spring. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And my friend Trevor was out with me. And we stopped mm-hmm. to get a drink. I'm leaning over getting a drink, and he got his hat just dumped on me. And uh-huh. at the time, I'm just, you know, half in shock. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what did you just do, huh? Yeah. yeah, but about 10, 15 minutes later, like, that calmed my body down. It helped so yeah. much. Awesome. So, so it's try, little things. Trying to and... crawl under the fountain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just sticking out there. <laughs> but, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. How was it for you, like, running into friends and family at all the aid stations? I know for me and Jacob, it was really fun to have, oh, like, yeah. our close friends and family cheering us on for every stop we were at. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, my my son had come out with me a little bit and ran a little with me. And oh, cute. So it, it does, it helps. Like, even if it, I guess, even if it's not shown from the person, <laughs> yeah. because I'm sure you guys felt halfway the same way where you're, you're wanting to be grateful, but at the same time, oh, you're just yeah. like, I just want to sleep or eat yeah. or both. Yeah, we warned all like... of our family. We were like, just so you know, we're grateful for everything you're doing. We will be mean to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will be mean. <laughs> so, it's not intentional. It's, it's just, nothing personal. <laughs> I can't waste words. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you know, with, with you know, your running and your kind of these adventures that you go on, how has that affected like your kids and your family? Do they see dad doing hard things and know that they can do hard things? Do you feel like that's helped them understand that? I hope so. Um, mm-hmm. You got kids, you know how it is. Sometimes yeah. it's a battle. and Right. But, it doesn't always sink in the way you want it to. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and and when, one thing I've kind of tried to tell myself over and over again is they got their thing, I got my thing. Like. Mm-hmm. They may not have the passion for running. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a lot of them don't. Like, and that's fine. But my daughter, she loves soccer. Like, that's yeah. 100% her thing. Awesome. And I, that's me too. Like, yeah. <laughs> like realistically, that's, I love it. So. Oh, that's fun. But, uh, and my other two boys, they got their things. And my oldest, my oldest boy, I, I really want him to run. Eric. <laughs> you listening? But, uh. <laughs> No, he's he's great, and he does soccer also, and he's great at it. And yeah. Cool. So, and Rachel does, she she runs, she bikes. Yeah. Yeah, and she's super good to us. Like, she is. She, <laughs> she keeps the home fires burning. Absolutely. Well, so, you know, running is often something people come into later in life. Like, I feel like setting that example and then keeping them involved in physical activity, like, yeah. it may be someday they, they get into it, you know especially in high school when it, it can be more social running, like on yeah. the cross-country team or whatever. You, you never know. Yeah. Hold out hope. <laughs> no, no. That's, I kind of keep hoping. My one son, he plays a ton of basketball, like three or four hours a day most days. And, and uh, I keep trying to want, get him to want to like running. And he just, like, unfortunately, because I think so many coaches use it as a punishment. Yeah. Like, he associates running with, with pain and torture instead. But... Um, my, a couple of my other kids are, are like, 
like it okay. <laughs> and so it's like, just get into high school, join the cross country team and you'll be fine. You'll like it. So, yeah. yeah. So anyway, cool. That's, that's so fun to see. I don't know that, that journey, where does that drive come from to do some of these like just creative or different races and, and runs and stuff where like, I don't know. It's just, I, I see an idea or, you know, someone gives me an idea and I'm like, yeah, that would be, that'd be good. You know, yeah. I like to push the boundaries and I go back to JFK and he's like, we do these things to see so what is the phrase here. Uh, to test our abilities, like to push the boundaries, basically, you know, yeah. just mm-hmm. to see what we can do. That's yeah. the whole point. So I love it. I've got an idea I want to talk to you off camera about. All right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool idea. Actually, it might line up with you pretty well, Adam, too. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that that's so fun to see those those different challenges and how you've conquered them and how they didn't, none of them were easy or go smoothly necessarily, yeah. right? Everyone had its own hiccups and challenges, but you figure it out. What, you know, when somebody is just starting out or somebody that's trying to tackle one of these big challenges, any advice for somebody that's, that's getting into, uh, you know, running or ultra distances or trying to do some kind of adventure? Um, I think the biggest thing I've learned is just consistency. Like just, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, running a block and a half down and back to your house or even just walking that for a month, like get in the habit, get the routine and then just build, mm-hmm. you know, and follow that 10% rule if you want. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, baby step it. And yeah. And just build. Yeah. I, uh, it's interesting how many times we ask that question, like what advice would you have? Yeah. The answer is almost always consistency. Yeah. yeah. Just keep going. Just make yep. it part of your lifestyle. Yep. Yeah. 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 I say make it like part of your everyday routine, like brushing your teeth or taking a shower, just going your run, right? Yeah. And yeah, like you said, it doesn't have to be long. And some days, honestly, it's just checking a box. Yeah. It's not that you <clears throat> love it or whatever on on some oh, days, yeah. right? It's just <laughs> I'm doing it to keep the, the streak alive, right? To keep yep. that consistency going. And uh, it may just be a block and a half. It may just be 10 or 15 minutes. But that 10 or 15 minutes still established the habit or kept the habit going yeah. and did something for you. It's more calories than you would have burned sitting on the couch. Yeah. Right. And, and and come back to this too, nothing wrong with failure. Like right. even when I, even when I was at my peak for the marathon, like right. I remember there were a few days where I went out, you know, for, for two hours or something and I'd go out for 45 minutes and I'd call Rachel and be like, Hey, I'm walking down Washington. You want to come grab me? Cause yeah. Cause I was done. Yeah. It's hotter and, than uh, I expected yeah. or I just didn't sleep well last yeah. night, whatever the reason you is. You too much on your mind. Yeah. yeah. Just, sometimes it's just what it is and you're just like, you know what? Yeah. It's just not feeling tomorrow. today. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and that's the beauty that. of consistency is you know one day is that big of a deal yeah. that you have those miles in or that if, you know, that you're going to make a big enough change in one day for it to be significant. Yep. Either, either direction. So don't push too hard because it's not going to do as much for you as you think. <laughs> and, and, you know, don't back off too much because, you know, no one day or don't be afraid of backing off. I mean, because no one day is that important. It's the Absolutely. consistency where we make changes. Yep, yep. So cool. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank it's been exciting to hear about your adventure and your, you know, uh, just, uh, I, I think still my mind is a little blown from that uh, Arizona to Idaho run. Yeah, your your willingness to challenge yourself and tackle hard things, though, is, is amazing. So well done and fun to hear. And thanks so much for joining us. Again, this is Josh Bryant. How do people follow you if they want to follow you? What's the best way? Um... Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Facebook, look up Joshua Bryant um, here in Utah. And he's he's fun to follow. Uh, always got some kind of new adventure coming up. Um, so thanks so much for joining us with uh, Cameron and Melody here from Body Smart on the Run Amazing Utah podcast. Thanks so much and have a good one. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Run Amazing Utah. Remember, if they can do it, you can do it too. If you have an inspirational running story or know someone who does, we would love to feature you too. Contact us through our Instagram or Facebook, Run Amazing Utah.